In today's video, I am going to be discussing Hylion and their Hypertruck ERX, the new semi-truck that they're developing. It's a hybrid electric uh, semi that's running on renewable natural gas, which is also referred to as biomethane. We're just going to be going over, you know, what does the future look like for semis? The probable future, obviously we can't crystal clearly see exactly what the future will be like but we're just going to be taking a look out there so obviously transportation across light vehicles and heavy duty vehicles like semis is becoming more and more electrified kind of moving towards full battery electric vehicles however in my opinion hybrids do have a pretty valuable place even as we go towards these battery full battery electric vehicles and some of these reasons can be seen with like tesla so obviously tesla announced in like 2017 their tesla semi and they were going to begin production of that fairly shortly after the announcement you know within the next couple of years or so and that didn't happen and the main reasons that they always give they're just cell constrained the semi uses so many battery cells and in order to produce one semi they use the amount of cells that they would otherwise be able to use in quite a number amount you know of other Model 3s, Model Ys, Model S, Model X. So they could produce multiple lightweight vehicles instead of one semi. And that's just a trade-off that they haven't been willing to make yet. They're more focused on having higher lightweight vehicles on the road than having semis at this point. So Tesla mainly hasn't been able to execute on the semi due to cell constraints. And that's just a problem that pretty much everybody trying to build fully battery electric semis is going to be facing right now at this point in time. And obviously semis running on just an internal combustion diesel engine, they're pretty inefficient compared to a hybrid or a battery electric powertrain. So this is kind of where hybrids really have their place with semis right now is that they really don't use a lot of battery capacity at all there's just virtually not much battery capacity being used and it's just way it's much more efficient than the traditional internal combustion powertrains that semis many semis are using right now so overall that's kind of just why i think that's why hylion is really kind of making a pretty good product here they're going to be able to build them for fairly cheap as far as batteries go because there's just not much battery cost and for tesla that would be certainly like the largest single component expense for the semis so hylion can kind of get around that by making it just a hybrid powertrain so essentially like hybrids right now here as of 2022 and probably for the next few years i don't really know how long but basically just until we're not cell constrained and there's just more cells able to be used at a cheaper price until that happens i think that hybrid powertrain semis are better to build than battery electric semis. So basically I think Hy Hylion basically has the lead right here against Tesla and everybody else making semis, but only for the next few years. I, I, I don't really see this extending out too far. Like I don't think this will be the case in 10 years. I think in 10 years there will be enough cells going around. They'll be pretty cheap and I think there's going to be a pretty good amount of better electric semis. So that's just kind of my thoughts on just the initial production of it, costs, and just availability of parts and materials as far as just batteries go. So is renewable natural gas in particular the right fuel for hybrid semis? I think that it probably is. It's definitely like, it certainly is if you were after sustainability. Obviously other kinds would be things like diesel hybrids or hydrogen fuel cell hybrids. And um, hydrogen, I think hydrogen could be good here for the next few years for semis. I think ultimately, like I, again, I think that the ultimate form for pretty much everything is just battery electric. No hybrid, just, just battery. But I, I do think that like hydrogen could kind of hold its ground for say five years, 10 years, I don't know you know, until, until there's no cell constraint, but it's kind of just like neutral, you know, it, it's not, um, it's kind of, uh, it, and it's very complicated to build out as well, of course, you know, fueling station and all of this and renewable natural gas really kind of, I think it kind of just gives a slam down to, to hydrogen for semis, um, because it's, it's kind of net negative. These, these, uh, you know, biomethane basically is produced is just a byproduct of already existing processes that are happening. And otherwise, this would just be released out into the atmosphere. However, I do see this becoming kind of a problem. You can't, you, we certainly can't use renewable natural gas just for like everything. This is like kind of a niche thing that can only really kind of fly like right now. 
and um, basically like envision like all of the semis in the world were fueled by renewable natural gas that would take a ton of renewable natural gas to meet that demand and obviously it's just produced as a byproduct of existing processes and if there was so much demand there would probably end up needing to be renewable natural gas being produced as just a fuel not as a byproduct of something else but as just a fuel in itself and that's not something that we want to happen necessarily because it's not like it's super clean as it is like it's only clean in the sense that it takes away from emissions that would otherwise be released if it wasn't used um so we should not we should certainly try to avoid the excess kind of production of biomethanes just for the sheer purpose of using it as a fuel it should only be kind of less secondary use sort of if that makes any sense and then as for just kind of fueling stations, obviously we're talking about hydrogen and how the fueling stations for hydrogen are quite difficult to build out. Electric is probably the easiest because you can just throw it down anywhere that there's grid coverage. Um, and of course you can even just, you know, if you, if, you, if you didn't even have the grid, you can just have like solar and batteries doing that for you. So it can kind of work, it can work anywhere there's grid and it's not outrageously difficult to do it where there's not the grid. And renewable natural gas is fairly similar. It basically can work anywhere there's natural gas pipelines. Those are kind of like everywhere in the U.S. Certainly for semis, I think that renewable natural gas would be pretty easy to build out fueling stations for it because the kind of network to transport it is already there. We already have the pipelines. We just need to kind of build the station itself. So I think just for fueling, I think that it's fairly comparable to electric stations. Uh, electric stations, I do th I do still think that those are easier to build. There's just less complexity to them. And, and obviously, these renewable natural gas fueling stations, they won't be everywhere. And that's fine, because semis, they don't need to fuel everywhere. There doesn't need to be a ton of stations for these renewable natural gas hybrid semis. Because semis, again, they, they, you know, they travel pretty long distance routes usually. So they don't, they just don't, generally don't really need a fueling station to be quite as common as electric charging stations or as gas stations and diesel fueling stations and whatnot. So is Hylion, is it a good idea to make the Hypertruck ERX a plug-in hybrid? Because the, the initial production version that they're producing here, the first variant, will be a plug-in hybrid. It'll have a battery with 75 miles of range you plug that in, just like a you know an electric vehicle. Charge that, and um, it'll just run on the battery until the battery is dead, and it'll switch over to that hybrid renewable natural gas engine generator setup, just as a standard hybrid. Very similar to a Chevrolet Volt and a Prius Prime and whatnot, other plug-in hybrid cars. So basically, I think that having this plug-in hybrid version is a nice option to have for customers, but I don't really think that they should do it necessarily because most of these semis, they're doing long distance road trips. You know, these could be racking, you know, hundreds of miles in a day. Only a small portion of that trip is gonna be done on that 75 mile battery. I mean, obviously every little bit makes a, makes a difference in it, but all in all, like, they're just doing long distance trips all the time. Like a plug-in hybrid car, um, those are really great for people because for most trips that people do, they're shorter range, you know, within, you know, they could be under 40 miles usually. You don't really go over 40 miles in a day. Um, so you can have 40 miles or so in a plug-in a plug-in hybrid car and never need to run on the gas, essentially, only for road trips. Now, in this case, these semis, they're doing road trips every day. So they're running on the uh, renewable natural gas all the time. It would be pretty rare to only do 75 miles in a day. So... I don't think that the battery is very necessary, and of course, having this larger kind of a battery capable of doing 75 miles, that'll increase the weight only by a little bit in the grand scheme of it, but that'll lower the efficiency, and it'll add to the cost of producing the vehicle by a fair amount. So I don't really think that having this plug-in hybrid variant is too valuable for Hylion or for the customers. Um, obviously, there's going to be some customers that usually may maybe they do do a lot of shorter range trips and having that battery range will be very significant for them. But I think that's going to be kind of a 
not a ton of customers, and I don't really think that it's necessarily the variant that they should start off with and really focus too much on, because it's just, I don't think it's very worth it. So overall, that's kind of, those are just my thoughts on the Hypertruck ERX and what Hylion's doing. Um, I think that they're doing a pretty good job. I know that they're kind of been stuck in production for a bit. They claim that it's due to shortage of parts and components and materials and whatnot, and they haven't been able to bring in production. And um, certainly that's been a pretty significant factor in it. But overall, like, this is kind of where it all kind of settles for me, and this is why I'm not very, not extremely optimistic on Hylian, is because as, as much as these kind of things, they're pretty, like, this is, again, like I've said, like, this is probably what's the th right thing to do for these next few years, I don't think Hylian's really going to be able to get this to scale at all within the next few years, just based on kind of the rate that they're moving at. I think that they're really going to be able to get this off the ground, you know, in two, three years or something at this rate, and, um, you know, who knows. And by that time, I think that there's just going to be more cells available, they're going to be cheaper to build, there's just going to be higher, more, it's going to be easier to build a full battery electric semi, and so I, I just don't really see Hylion really making it past this decade necessarily. Well, like, not saying that they're going to be dead by the end of the decade or anything, I'm just saying, like, I don't see it being, like, the best powertrain to have for a semi by the time this decade is over. I think that that's going to be a battery electric powertrain. So that's about it. That's all I really wanted to go over in this video. Hope you all enjoyed this one. See ya.